Hi there, boys and girls. Today for story time, we're going to read Forest Fire by Mary Ann Frazier. This book has some great illustrations, some great pictures. For 250 years, debris had been collecting on the ancient forest floor. The entire valley was like a fire ring stacked with kindling. High in the trees, pine cones crackled in the heat of the afternoon. Below, a hungry bear and her cubs searched for berries and grubs. The noisy cubs startled an elk, munching on a patch of withered grass nearby. With the elk gone, a ground squirrel ventured from his burrow. Cautiously, he scampered across the brown matted pine needles. Settled, settling on a log, he sunned in one of the few shafts of light that found its way through the dense tree branches. Suddenly, a gust of wind ripped through the trees. There was a sound of splintering wood. The ground squirrel leaped out of the way just as the lodgepole pine, killed by bark beetles, fell to the ground. Crash! There was a hush over the valley. Clouds, like steam from a boiling cauldron, rolled over the mountain peaks. Thunder broke the silence, and the elk lifted its head to the sky. The bear sniffed the air, and the ground squirrel peeked from a hollowed stump. There was a blinding flash, and then boom, crack, lightning struck the top of an old dead pine tree. The tree burst into flames, and the crackling blaze spread from treetop tree to treetop, just like the lighting of torches. Sparks rained onto the brittle pine needles and raced across the forest floor. Soon the entire valley was engulfed in flames and whipped into a firestorm by the strong winds. struck the tree and caused it to catch fire. Boulders exploded from the heat. Smoke inked out the sun. Wind roared through the area like a freight train. The wide-eyed elk bounded past the bear family, who stumbled and rolled their way to a hollow by the creek. The ground squirrel darted into his burrow to escape the flames that raced towards him. scary. The fire was coming towards you. The whole forest on fire. For months, pockets of fires and flames smoldered in the roots and the stumps of trees. At last, an autumn rain snuffed out the last remaining embers, and the narrow valley, once covered by old growth and trees, had quickly become a charred and barren landscape. Once there was a beautiful forest, now it's all burned away. But the forest had not died. Many of the pine cones of the lodgepole pines had a resin coating to protect them. The fire had melted the resin, and now these cones sprung open, scattering their seeds. The ground squirrel ate some of the pine seeds and buried others to eat later, some he never found again. 
these forgotten seeds would be ready to sprout in the coming spring. The pine cones. They survived the fire and popped open. Little seeds came out. Squirrel hides those seeds and buries them. Some of them will be ready to sprout and grow. Although most of the bushes had been burned, those with deep roots were still alive, and within weeks they had new shoots poking up among the blackened branches. The elk nibbled at the new stems and leaves and licked the ash for its minerals. Just like all the forest animals, he needed to build up thick layers of fat to survive the difficult winter. New growth from the tree. Those little bushes. The, gr the ground squirrel and the bears began their long hibernation just before. <laughs> Excuse me. Let's try that again. The ground squirrel and the bears began their long hibernation just before a fierce blizzard draped the valley in snow. An old mule deer who had survived the fire now died from the cold. He became food for a star starving coyote. He has to find food as well. Spring was a time of renewal for the valley. The snowmelt seeped through the ash and carried nutrients for plants into the soil and streams. Since treetops no longer blocked the sun, the lodgepole pine seeds sprouted in the warm, moist earth. Mushrooms popped up beside the rotting, burnt timber and helped to break it down, enriching the soil. The bear family awoke from their winter hibernation and feasted on the animals that had died during the winter. Grass seeds carried by the wind burst forth into a lush carpet patterned by wildflowers of every color. Wood beetles, millipedes, mites, and ant colonies had escaped the fire by hiding under rocks or below ground. As the seedlings sprang up above many, excuse, excuse me, as the seedlings sprang up, many above ground insects which had flown away returned and the new plants gave them food and places to hide and lay their eggs. Deer and elk grew fat on the grasses, which contained more nutrients than the grasses growing in the unburnt areas. Now more light can shine for the grasses and plants to grow. In the forest, blocked out of the sunlight, there wasn't much grass growing. Do you remember at the beginning of the story? grass growing. Now there's a lot more. More bats and birds than ever before came to the valley to feed on the many insects. As the woodpeckers drill ho drilled holes into the burnt out trees looking for bark beetle larvae, they create nests, nesting sites for songbirds. Mice, chipmunks, and squirrels have bulging cheeks from all the seeds that they've gathered, and soon owls, snakes, foxes, coyotes, and weasels came to raise their families and to hunt these small rodents. We know all about bats, don't we? They're good for our, our community. After five years, the pine seedlings were only one to two feet high. 
When strong winds blew, burned trees toppled into the creek and calmed its rushing currents. The fallen timber, together with minerals washed into the sun-bathed stream, create perfect conditions for water plants and algae to grow. Water insects, such as the mayflies, caddis flies, and stoneflies ate these plants. They became food for the trapped, and the mother bear spent many late afternoons alone catching fish, since her cubs had left to find their own territories. A moose gave birth to a calf among some willows, and the valley once again could provide food and shelter for many kinds of creatures. The fire had renewed the forest. Fire burns up the old trees, bushes, now new trees. New stuff can grow. Forest fires can be good for the animals too. After 25 years, the valley supported more plants and animals than the earlier old forest. Ground squirrels darted and zigzagged through the sagebrush. Elk, deer, moose, and bison grazed in the open fields, surrounded by young fir and spruce. Aspen and pine. Look at that porcupine up in the tree. Over the next two hundred years. The sun-loving grasses, wildflowers, and shrubs died as the trees' interwoven branches blocked the sun once again. Many deer and bison left to find better grazing, but animals like the goshawk, which depend on old forest growths, old forest growth, moved in. As the valley had come full circle, someday when conditions are just right, a tiny spark will begin the forest's life cycle once again. Again, the trees have grown really tall and block the light. But when it burns again, there'll be new growth. The end. Forest fire. I hope you enjoyed today's story. Sorry I messed up a few times. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.